Tottenham have today confirmed their second signing of a summer transfer window that hasn't even opened yet. But somehow it has still been a very bad day in the world of Tottenham transfer news as agent Tulio Tinti confirms that Alessandro Bastoni will quote definitely stay at Inter Milan. It's a massive blow to Tottenham's transfer hopes. We heard last night that maybe they have already moved on to uh, to their replacement. So it, it might not be the end of the world, but it's definitely bad news. Uh, and it's definitely news that broke my heart today, um, as I'm sure the majority of you watching will know. Uh, welcome everyone to the chat. we got Smokehouse Stew, channel member in here. Uh, great to see you. Um, so many familiar faces in there as well. Uh, we're going to be talking about Bastoni. We're going to be talking about Pau Torres. We're also going to talk about that confirmed signing of Fraser Forster. But before we do get into that, if you are new to the channel, please do make sure to hit that subscribe button down below to be kept right up to date with all of Tottenham's transfer dealings throughout the January or throughout the summer transfer window. Um, I am feeling a bit unwell today, so I apologise if my uh, physical appearance is more jarring than usual. But we will dive into it. Uh, we'll we'll start with that quote from uh, from Tulio Tinti, Alessandro Bastoni's agent. He said, um, after a meeting with Inter Milan today, he said he will definitely stay at Inter. He has a contract and is happy to play for Inter. It's not a problem. So the the news that we had yesterday from from Darmesh Sheth, from Gianluca Di Marzio, that Tottenham had opened talks with Inter Milan. The news from from Graham Bailey that Alessandro Bastoni had told Tottenham or had told Inter Milan he wanted to go to Tottenham. All of it whether it was true, whether it was false, whether it was made up, whether it was well-sourced, it's irrelevant. Um, his agent today has come out and said um, that, that he wants to stay at Inter. And look, there's, in, in in the world of transfers, I think it's it's warranted that there's still some some hope that maybe this is a ploy from, from Tinti and from Bastoni to get a bit more money from Tottenham. People are saying it's maybe a ploy from, from Inter Milan to get more money from Tottenham. Wh whatever it is, I think we have to take this at face value because it is coming from... The, the the agent you know we, we have to take this as as though it's true and it's it's heartbreaking to do so because um look i've been calling for bastoni since since last summer uh he's he's a, the, the player that's perfect to play in that position for antonio conte he's young uh he's a lot of improvement to do it, it seemed as though one that could be forced through because of the financial situation that inter milan are in but it wasn't to be unfortunately my my confidence that um, had had began to to wane a little bit in the last week or so has been completely slashed, and as TB says there, it's time to move on. It's time to, to move on to other targets, look on to to different left left centre backs, whether it's Pau Torres or Sven Botman or um, Evan Andika as a centre centre back. Whatever it is, we need to move on and we need to look ahead. Um, but before we do that, let's run quickly through what actually happened today uh, and how we got to to this point with Alessandro Bastoni. Look, uh, Pam, great to see you. Uh, we, we know we had all these uh, updates last night. Uh, we, we streamed at 7 o'clock yesterday, uh, and then straight after we streamed, uh, De Marzio said that we were in contact with Inter Milan. We, we were in talks. Man United were as well. Um, uh, Angelo Mangiante said that we were preparing a bid. Uh, and all this then, Sky Italia, come out and say we're looking for Pau So everything was thrown up into the air last night. I, th I think it, it did reach a boiling point, and we were, we were kind of expecting clarification either way. Um, but the good news did continue to come out this morning. Uh, the Evening Standard, very good source for Tottenham News, said that Tottenham are pressing hard for Bastoni, with the club hopeful of convincing the defender to join this summer after securing Champions League football last season. Uh, Malik Uzia had also said that Tottenham were confident. You know, it, it was looking good. Uh, Fabio Santini said that in the last few hours, uh, this is early this morning, that there had been renewed talks with Tottenham uh, regarding Alessandro Bastoni. Inter Milan are now ready to sell the player with Marcos Sinesi lined up as a replacement. Those two reports, I think the first one, saying Tottenham was confident. Fair enough, we can take that as true. But the one that Inter Milan were ready to sell him, Let's be honest. Um, Spurger King with the, the five pounds. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. It says Bastoni is a blow, uh, but we thought Diaz was too. And look who we got instead. Chins up and all that. And it's a fantastic point. You know, Tottenham a few times in the recent past have, have ended up in very lucky getting their uh, their second choice player. And that's a, a good point. And I really appreciate the super chat. So thank you for that. Uh, and then we, we, after those reports came out, we we realized where we were going and we were ending up at that point where we'd, we'd know either way. Uh, various sources. The first that I saw was Daniel Longo saying that Alessandro Bastoni's agent had arrived at Inter um, Inter Milan's headquarters to to meet with the manager Simone Inzaghi. I, I would assume that someone like Beppe Morata was was in that meeting as well. Um, and then it was a waiting game. It was a waiting game for Tottenham to to see what would happen after that meeting. I think if if they went came out of that meeting uh, and 
and Bastoni's agent had been told that uh, a move away from the club was likely. I don't think we would have heard anything, but then we start to wait for the reports that come out. The last thing we wanted was his agent to come out and say he's definitely staying at Inter Milan. Um, now, while we were waiting for that, we got news uh, from Laurent Tanzi and from a few other sources in France that uh, PSG had started talks with Inter from Milan Skriniar. That's when the panic set in. Uh, for me, anyway, that's when I started to think, damn it, this is going very poorly for us because they lose Milan Skriniar. They're not selling Alessandro Bastoni. And I think that's been definitive and, and, and well known from, from moment one. Um, Santi Auna said that Inter Milan had received requests for both Milan Skriniar and Alessandro Bastoni. If one is sold, the other will be retained. Panic starts to set in a little bit more. And then out come the quotes from Bastoni's agent that he will definitely say at Inter Milan. Just to reiterate these quotes, it will be across the bottom of your screen as well. Um, he said that uh, he will definitely stay at Inter. He has a contract and is happy to play for Inter. It's not a problem. Uh, look, I have to praise Tottenham within this situation. Um, fr from what we can see, it looks like we did everything in our power to to change the situation, to to try and convince the player that, that this was the, the right move for him. And again, um, I'll repeat a hundred times, as far as I know, that there were preliminary agreements between Tottenham and Bastoni over personal terms if, if a deal were to materialise. Um, the, the, the best thing and the biggest praise I can give to Tottenham is that we've pushed for this early in the window. Again, the window isn't even open. The window opens on Friday, two days from now. Um, we pushed for it early and look, there's been too many times where Tottenham have been, been heavily reliant on purchasing a certain player, uh, have needed to get a deal over the line but left it late in the window done our typical penny pinching and ended up in a situation late in the window where a number one target wasn't going to happen and then we didn't have time to find another target and to actually get a player in that position so ultimately we were left with our tails between our legs and a, a hole in in a certain part of the pitch but we pushed for this early on and i i said last week i said the week before i'm pretty sure i said this week that i'd rather know where we lie with this deal, whether it's positive or negative, I'd rather know so that we can either get the deal done or move on to, to different targets. And here we are again, two days before the window is opened and we know where we stand. We know that Alessandro Bastoni will not be joining Tottenham this summer. And now we have a whole summer to try and sign uh, a Pau Torres, try and sign Sven Botman, uh, Gleison Bremer, who, whoever it is, whoever the next target is. If all these names are smokescreen and we're going for somewhere else, somewhere else, whatever the situation is, we have a lot of time to to get that done. And fair play to Tottenham. We didn't get the deal done. It looks like it was out of our hands and it was never going to happen anyway. But we have time to to figure out what the uh, what the best action is. And look, it seems if there is a number one target at the moment that it is this man, Pau Torres, who, who turned Tottenham down last season to stay at Villarreal to, to compete in the Champions League for them, ended up getting to, to the quarterfinal. Uh, Fabrizio Romano has said today that Tottenham are discussing Pau Torres with Villarreal during talks for La Celso. So look, for, for quite a while, uh, we, we, we've we been expecting Villarreal to come in and, and, and make that loan deal for La Celso permanent. And Tottenham fans for for quite a few months have been suggesting that a swap deal for Pau Torres, of course, with cash going in the direction of the, the Yellow Submarine as well. Um, it, it, it makes sense. And now that Bastoni is off, it makes sense that this is one that we'd be pursuing. You have to question, did Tottenham know yesterday that uh, a deal for um, a deal for Bastoni wouldn't happen? Maybe. But a simple fact of the matter is, uh, again, as Sky Italy said, that Tottenham are working on a part exchange deal involving Giovanni Lo Celso for defender Pau Torres. Um, look, of course, I would have rather Bastoni. I'm not going to hide that. I tweeted out in jest that I never wanted Bastoni anyway. Of course I did, but I've also maintained that Pau Torres is, is a damn good backup option to have. And if that's what we're going for now, it's it's a very good, uh, a very, very good uh, option to have there. Um, and just looking a bit at, at Pau Torres' stats... Uh, they, look, they, they do raise concerns. Defensively there, you can see on the, the left-hand side, you know, tackles won, um, successful pressures, interceptions, clearances, blocks, or clearances and errors are, are all ranked really low. Um, in This is, again, compared to the top centre-backs in the top five leagues in European football. Um, dribblers tackled, shots blocked, a, a, a bit more positive, but defensively hasn't been set in the world of light. Um, in possession, it's a little bit different. Uh Looks somewhat average for tackle or for touches, passes completed, pass completion percentage. Um, but in terms of progressive carrying, progressive passing, which is what Tottenham really, really need in this position in our team, he's doing quite well. Uh, top 10% for progressive passes with 4.39 per 90. Top 11% for passes into the final third. Uh, very good with passes under pressure as well, which I mentioned yesterday and something that 
that I definitely observed, especially in that um, in that uh, Champions League semi final against Liverpool. Progressive carries as well. He, he likes to bring the ball forward, so okay, it makes sense as an option. Uh, he definitely fits into. I, I, I'd I'd. I'd say it fits into everything that we've seen with Tottenham in, in their pursuit of a left centre-back this summer. I mean, even Alessandro Bastoni, those um, defensive stats weren't the weren't the best. But in terms of carrying the ball, bringing the ball forward, being an attacking option from centre-back, as Ben Davis and Cody Romero have been this season, Pau Torres fits into that. And um, again, like I've said all along, he, he's a good option to, to have and a, a good player to target. Um, other names that have been mentioned at left centre-back or at centre-back in general, uh, George Bannister has said today that Spurs are keeping tabs on Monaco centre-back Benoit Badiashile. Uh, Gary Jacob uh, saying what we heard yesterday that uh, that Spurs have been offered Clement Longley, uh, who has been made available on loan by Barcelona. However, wages could be an issue as he earns about £170,000 a week. Uh, Sky Italia, as we spoke about last night, saying Tottenham are among the teams interested in Lille centre-back Sven Botman, who is valued at €45 million, Euro, uh, which is which is quite bizarre. Uh, I think we felt all along that a move to AC Milan was, was going to happen there, um, but maybe that's not the case. It could be Newcastle. Luke Edwards, in the last hour or so, has reported that Newcastle are close to making a breakthrough in their pursuit of Tottenham target Sven Botman. Uh, Ryan Taylor of the Daily Express, not, the, not a source that I'd trust it my life uh, says that there are several other left-footed centre-back targets on Tottenham's radar most notably Pau Torres uh, Sven Botman is also of interest Jasko Verdial is expected to stay uh, at Orby Leipzig which I think has been the, the line that we're getting for the most of the summer on that one as well um, for a, a nice break from the centre-back chat uh, Gary Jacob has said that Tottenham hope that playing in the Champions League next season will swing the decision of Christian Eriksen. He's also said that Gabriel Jesus has been offered to Tottenham, but Arsenal are quietly confident. Uh, Telegraph Football also saying that Tottenham hold an interest in Gabriel Jesus, who is expected to leave Man City this summer. And the biggest struggle, the biggest challenge that I think faces Tottenham in in, in potentially bringing Jesus to the, to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium would be how much game time we can really offer him. I think the reason he's leaving Manchester City is that he he's not a consistent starter. Um, and look, despite that, he returned uh, eight goals and eight assists in the league last season. So I think will be a very good signing for Tottenham, depending on how, on how much we um we we actually need to pay for him. He's in the last year of his contract, but the the talks are between forty and fifty million euro uh, for the player, which I, I really wouldn't pay in the last year of his contract. Um, but these are continuing, and again, Gary Jacobs saying he's been offered to Tottenham. Uh, a new story yesterday that was uh, broken by Jaffet Tanganga's agent has been, uh, I suppose you could say, confirmed by Gary Jacob today. He said that Man United have turned down an approach from Tottenham for Marcus Rashford. Uh, says that, uh, that Tottenham are told the forward wants to stay under Eric Ten Hag. Uh, and the reason Tottenham went for him is that we uh, want a versatile forward and believe we could help Rashford to rediscover his best form. Uh, well, that's one that, that probably won't happen. I think Roberto Defanti, uh, Tanganga's agent, mentioned uh, something in the region of 80, 70 or 80 million uh, to make that happen, but it's it's not going to happen. I think that's safe to say. One move that has happened, and uh, as I tweeted out when I was uh, promoting this stream, it, I, th I think a lot of people have perhaps forgotten that Tottenham did sign a player today. I know it was a, a move that we were expecting, but in, in the midst of the centre-back madness, I think we've all forgotten that Fraser Forster plays for Spurs. Um, it was announced today, uh, Spurs tweeted, uh, I think it was about half 10 or 11 o'clock, that uh, we are delighted to announce the signing of Fraser Forster in their statement. They said, the experienced goalkeeper has signed a contract with us until 2024 and will join the club on the 1st of July following the expiration of his contract at Southampton. Uh, Fraser has made 134 Premier League appearances to date, keeping 42 clean sheets, having joined Southampton from Celtic in August 2014. And look, as far as second choice goalkeepers in the Premier League go, he's, he's very experienced and a, a very talented goalkeeper as well. It, it's not just experience that he offers. Uh, the England international uh, began his career at Newcastle United before loan spells at Stockport County, Bristol Rovers and Norwich City, where he helped the team secure promotion to the championship. In 2010, he joined Celtic on a season long loan and returned for a second loan spell the year after a deal which turned per permanent in 2012. And he says that featuring numerous times in the Champions League, uh, Forster won three Scottish Premiership titles and two Scottish Cups. Uh, there's a few other stories, uh, lines there on this time at Southampton. His return to Celtic, where he won the treble, uh, and then back to Southampton. He's made six appearances as well for England. But 
as I've said all through the summer, I think it's it's a good deal for Tottenham. Um, a, a very very good backup goalkeeper and one that I'm I'm looking forward to seeing in in the cup competitions for Spurs. Uh, from Forster himself, he said, "I'm absolutely delighted. This is a fantastic opportunity for me. When a team like this comes along, uh, it's impossible to say no. I couldn't get here fast enough to get it done. Um, everything about the place is world class. The stadium is probably the best I've ever been to. Ask any player in the Premier League, and that's what they'll say. The training ground is unbelievable. To be able to come here and work and work hard." I'm very privileged. It's an opportunity I'm grateful for. He also spoke of his his fondness of playing in the Champions League. Again, um, I don't think he'll get the chance in the Champions League, but he's playing with a Champions League club. Um, and at his age, as uh, as um, Michael Bridge said when he was on the channel, it's an honour for uh, for a player of, of his age to 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 get it into a club like Spurs. And, and speaking of that, I can I can play the clip now. Uh, Michael Bridge was on the channel a few months ago, uh, and this is what he had to say about a, a potential move for Fraser Forster joining Tottenham. Yeah. We're getting these lines well that Tottenham are going to kind of like steer away from their from their usual uh, process of bringing in young players who, who can build for the fu- future and bringing in players who are who are ready for now. And I think the the best thing about Conte is he's not the biggest spender in the world. You yeah. know, even some of the targets we've heard right now, Fraser Forster on a free, I think is a brilliant signing. He's I, he's an I, exceptional I goalkeeper. I do. I, it's funny actually that one. So the, I was trying to firm up Sam Johnson the other week, and it went quiet. And then I spoke to someone saying he thinks that he's going to be a number one somewhere else, which would make sense because if you look at it next season, we're back in the Champions League. So Hugo Lloris, barring injury, is going to play every league game and every Champions League game. So Tottenham, Tottenham next season only really needed a, a number two who's happy to be a number two. Now, for me, I think Fraser Forster ticks that box. English, you know, so, so he knows the league. It's funny as well. Talk about Gallini. I can't remember who told me this, but it might have been a player. But he is the most popular player in the dressing room. But oh, but that doesn't really matter on the pitch, does it? So, <laughs> and I think it was his Spotify that he was playing Champions League music at Carrow Road. It was at Instagram. It was his it was his speaker. So he's well into Tottenham. And the players love him. But would you want him playing Bayern Munich if Lloris has hurt himself? Yeah. No. Do I want Fraser Forster? Well, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. He's played in Champions League nights. Yeah, you know what this is all about. And what an honour for Fraser Forster at his age to join Tottenham Hotspur. I think it makes sense. It ticks all the boxes. And as I've said, Matt, I think there are fans sometimes who look at Lloris's errors and completely forget some saves he makes are, are unsavable. Uh, he's come third to Edison and Allison again in the goalkeeper stats. And I think Tottenham... I've got a real job on their hands to try and find someone to, to replace him. But the Forster situation just gives Tottenham another year of looking around and getting the right decision because the alternatives I'm hearing and English goalkeepers, and I just don't think they lay a glove on Lloris, but that's just in my personal opinion. I think, well, we all know uh, buying the, the best goalkeeper is really hard. Um, so it's a sensible signing. If it happens, it sounds like it will happen. Hopefully we can have uh, Michael back on the channel very soon to, to speak more about Spurs transfers. Uh, I just do want to mention there's over 560 of you watching and only 87 likes. Let's let's sort that out. And um, please do make sure to hit that uh, that like button. As as I always say, it really helps out every streamer when you when you hit that like button and let lets YouTube know that people enjoy the content. Um, and while you're down there, if you can hit that subscribe button uh, to keep up to date with all of Tottenham's transfer news throughout the remainder of this window that again hasn't even opened yet. Uh, it's been bizarre. It's been a crazy journey so far, and the window isn't even open. Um, on on the point of outgoings, we actually have direct quotes from two of our wingers. Uh, who one who looks to be leaving, one who looks to be staying. Uh, we'll start with the latter. Lucas Mora, who via Ajax Showtime has said, it's very likely that I will stay. I already had a conversation with the club. They are interested in me staying. And maybe it's because of, um, maybe it's because of a potential departure or an, an imminent departure for Stephen Bergwijn uh, that Lucas is staying. I think personally, if I had a choice between the two, Mora has done more for the club, but I think Bergwijn has more to offer in the future. Uh, if that makes sense, so feel free to disagree in the comments. I know, um, I know you always do. Um, but it's good that we have clarification on that situation, to, to be honest. I think the, the general feeling is that if uh, Lucas Moore will stay, see out the last year or two of his contract, and then maybe go back to Sao Paulo and go back to Brazil and uh, and play the twilight years of his career there. But look, he's a good player. Um, he's quick, he's nippy, good in the air for a man of his height as well. Um, so it's it's not exactly a bad thing for Tottenham to, to keep him in their ranks. 
Um, Stephen Bergwijn, however, definitely in a, a very, very different situation. And that is the wrong picture. That is not Stephen Bergwijn. That is Stephen Bergwijn. Um, he says, again, reiterating that, that he wants to go. He said, now is the time to leave. You could say that my suitcase is already packed. So uh, he's desperate to get out. Absolutely desperate. It says, I cannot afford another season like this. And it's tough mentally too. So look, it's 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 fair. Um, he hasn't gotten the chance he deserves at Tottenham. I, I don't blame someone for that. I don't blame Conte. I don't blame Paratici. It's just we needed more from our attackers. And Bergwijn hasn't really been able to offer that in what was uh, a season where we couldn't really take risks like that. Um, so it's unfortunate the way that it's ended. But I think I, I speak for all Spurs fans when I wish Bergwijn the best when he does um, inevitably, return to, inevitably return to the Netherlands. Um, Daniel Longo has also said today that Tottenham on 25 million euro for Steven Bergwijn as Ajax remain in pole position. Uh, a few lesser or unknown reliability reports before we wrap up. Uh, Stuttgart Nockrichten have said that Tottenham Hotspur are intensifying efforts to sign striker Sasha Kaladzic. Like you always say, I think I take um, local reports um, kind of more uh, local or... The, kind of the equivalent of football at London for, for other clubs. I take them a bit more seriously because you'd imagine they do have more of an insight into the club, but I haven't heard of that source, so I don't want to um I don't want to claim they're a good source without having something to back that up. Um El Demarque say that Valencia remain keen on signing Brian Hill this summer. Antonio Conte does not count on the winger as he is too lightweight. Uh, Mundo Deportivo say that Tottenham Hotspur have joined the race to sign Alvaro Morata and Sunsport say that Everton have made Tottenham's Harry Winks their priority midfield target this summer but face competition from Sevilla um, and look that's pretty much it uh, from what was a busy and upsetting day in the in the transfer market for Steve, uh, for, for Tottenham Steve Raddy Star, good to see you um, thanks very much for, for tuning in as always um, you joined at the wrong time though because we, we are just about to wrap up um, uh, an update there from Javi Jorquera uh, Javi Jorquera Marquez in the last couple of minutes he said the Villarreal want Pau Torres to join Tottenham over Manchester United in order to accelerate a deal for Giovanni Lo Celso so um, the it, it's it's advantageous to us not only within negotiations but in, within where decisions are going to be made because Villarreal wants a player from us, it makes them more likely to, to sell to us if that is the case. So let's hope that that is a decisive factor in, in Tottenham's efforts to get um, to get Pau Torres. Um, Simon says, the lack of puffy, teary, ridden eyes is a credit to you, Mr. Hayes, despite today's disappointing news. Simon, I got all my tears out before we came live, um, but I, I appreciate the, the kind words. Tony, my absolute pleasure. Um, uh, <laughs> Darren, look accidents happen that's all i'll say um skim is saying he wants torres and bremer um look actually we, if we have a few more minutes let's get some questions let's, let's get some uh comments in the live chat and I'll, I'll get through as many of them as i can um it'll be interesting to see if tottenham do actually make a move for glace and bremer um it, it, it seems as though the move to inter milan is maybe a um maybe a bit more advanced than uh something that tottenham could hijack but i think we we, we had an interest in the player and, and didn't didn't pursue it because um, we wanted Bastoni from them, but maybe with this, maybe Tottenham could um, could uh, move in and, and try and steal Bremer from under their noses, but I don't know if it'll be a very uh, fruitful attempt. Uh, Matthew says, who will intersell Lataro? Look, they, 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 they need to sell, and, and that is the fact of the matter. Um, we know PSG today enter talks over um, Milan Skriniar. Would that be a 60 million euro sale? I'm not sure that it would. They're also very busy in who they're bringing in. You're looking at uh, Christian Aslani, uh, Raul Bayanova, Paolo Dybala, Romelu Lukaku, uh, Clayson Bremer, maybe a right back if Dumfries leaves. So th I, I think there will still be another sale. Uh, Bobby says, is Skriniar totally off the table? I do like him, despite his volume of hair. Um, I, I, I would imagine Skriniar is off the table. Um, he said that he wants to stay at Inter. He wants to, um, to become a club legend. And it's very possible that money and the the trophies of PSG would would convince him to go there, but I don't think Tottenham would have enough to, to convince him to come to us. So personally, I would assume Skriniar is off the table. Uh, Steve says, what position would be your number one priority signing? For me, it's it's still left centre-back. Um, as good a job as Ben Davis has done there, um, I, I think we, we do need to improve and we need to get a Romero of the other side. It would have been Bastoni, um, but I think we need to get someone more consistent who can offer maybe a little bit more going forward out there. Um, but right wing back is probably a, a very, very close second to that. Um, Tim says, would you rather Pau Torres to someone like Bremer? I just feel Torres is such a level below Bastoni while still being quite expensive. Would you try Skriniar instead? 
I, I think the difference between Torres and then Bremer and Skriniar is that Torres is a left-sided centre-back, and, and that's what we need. Uh, we may be pursuing a centre-centre-back if we can get that deal done, but the, the absolute priority is to get a left-footed player to play on that left side, and Torres just, just fits that bill. Uh, Brock says Torres and Otero. Exactly. Brock, if you're Brock from Twitter, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, and, and that, uh, I, I had a chat with, with Brock on Twitter yesterday um, in, in the replies to one of the tweets where I was losing my mind at the, the, the crazy developments in the window. And I, for, I forget exactly how it went, but um, I'm going to try and find it here if I can quickly. Um, I do forget exactly how it went, but it was it was, it was positive, I suppose, in, in the way... Um, here it is. So Brock said, uh, first of all, um, saying, so I said uh, I was excited about the, the madness of, of Tars and Bastoni. Um, Brock says, it's a bit curious on the surface. We've all been able to see Geo plus money for Tars as being logical, but it'll only be uh, Tars or Bastoni, not both. Um, also saw that if Hinter get Dybala and Lukaku, they would sell Martinez rather than Bastoni. Interesting stuff. Um, and I said, look, it is confusing. I thought one of Torres or Bastoni must be a smokescreen. Maybe that's not the case if Tottenham had perhaps learned yesterday that Bastoni would rather say um, stay at Inter Milan. And I said on the Inter front, I don't think a Martinez sale in a situation where they get Dybala and Lukaku would would be instead of Bastoni because I don't think they, they still need a profit. And Lukaku and Dybala coming in to replace Martinez is essentially a net zero value um, in, in finances. And he pointed out that Dybala and Lukaku is, is uh, or Lukaku is a loan Dybala is for free um, but Inter need to cut their wage bill as well so I would assume the cutting that wage bill is to add to the profit or detract from the losses over the course of the season um, and then uh, Brock said uh, finding it interesting that the Italian media were briefed about a deal that would occur between an English and a Spanish club when we actively want an Italian player for that position so I think like I mentioned yesterday it could have been a situation where Tottenham Leaking that news about Pau Torres or maybe actually making a move for Pau Torres could have been to force Inter's hand into making a decision. Um, that decision has come today, not in our favour. But again, it's better off that we know that, that it is definitely off the table. Um, so a lot of interesting intricacies and smoke screens and um, reports in, in different ways coming out about this transfer window. And look, I love it, but I also hate it. But I also wouldn't change it for the world. Um, and it's bound to be bound to be a very exciting window. Um, uh, Steve says, "What is his obsession about Ericsson rejoining?" I just don't get it. The ship sailed long ago. Let's not go there. Look, uh, like I've said, I, I personally don't think it's um, it makes sense on a footballing front from a nostalgia point of view. God, I'd love to see it happen, but I, I'm not sure it's the most sensible option for um, for Tottenham to do from a footballing perspective. Because even in the way we play now, there, there's no number ten. I think. Signing someone in that position could give us a bit of versatility, maybe within um, within how we play there. But there's there's just so much that needs to go right. Um, reports are saying that Brentford have have offered um, Ericsson the biggest contract in their club's history to sign. So we, we would definitely have a fight in our hands there. Uh, but look, we, we we will wrap it up there. Um, please hit that like button if you haven't already. Um, we're not we're not at two hundred yet. We've nearly six hundred watching. So please let's see if we can get that to two hundred and fifty. Um, it would be greatly appreciated uh, if you could hit that like button and while you're down there make sure to subscribe um, to and hit that notification bell to be kept right up to date with all of Tottenham's transfer dealings throughout the summer we've had nearly 2,000 new subscribers in the last four weeks which is massively appreciated and we're, we're closing in on a quarter of a million views um, within the, the same time frame so the support I can promise you never never goes unnoticed um, and it is it is really appreciated Akshay says Matt Hayes is a transfer legend I appreciate that and Skim for your kind words I appreciate that as well um, let's hope there's more good news in the coming days and in the coming weeks. I think within the next four to five weeks, we will probably know um, the bulk of Tottenham's transfer dealings. Hopefully it'll all be done. Um, and like I said, this is your number one place to, to keep up to date with all of that. But from me for now, and as always, thank you so much for watching.